For being a relatively short-statured person, Dudley Moore certainly had a large gift for making it big. Throughout his career, which spanned over four decades, Moore managed to make a sizable mark on the entertainment industry in several different ways. He was an accomplished ensemble comedian, part of the wildest comic duos to ever come out of the UK, a movie star, and later on in life, a respected musician. Moore often lamented that being 5'2 and working class, coupled with the fact he was born with a deformed left foot, put him at a tremendous disadvantage in life. But he used these feelings of inferiority to fuel his comedy. He had the will and drive to succeed and wasn't about to back down because of a few obstacles. Moore was born at Charing Cross Hospital in central London. He was the son of Ada Francis, a secretary, and John Moore, a railroad worker from Glasgow. Moore was raised in the Bee Country estate in Dagenham, Essex. He first rose to fame as a member of the Beyond the Fringe comic review in the early 60s. As a kind-hearted and musically talented member of the quartet, alongside the towering Peter Cook, the playwright Alan Bennett, and opera producer Jonathan Miller, Moore first made a name for himself in London's East End theater scene and later on Broadway. With Cook, Moore starred on British television and eventually in the classic film satires Wrong Box in 1966 and Bedazzled in 1967. Years after parting ways with Cook, Moore showed up once again in a small role in the Chevy Chase Goldie Hawn comedy Foul Play in 1978, portraying a strikingly funny yet haplessly lustful orchestra conductor. A year later, he appeared in the male midlife crisis comedy Ten. In 1981, he starred in the Steve Gordon-directed comedy Arthur, where he played a drunken New York City billionaire named Arthur Bach, who is on the verge of an arranged marriage to a wealthy heiress, but ends up falling in love with a working-class commoner girl from Queens. Moore received an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor for the role, and a few years later, he was awarded a Golden Globe for his performance in 1984's Mickey and Maude. Although Moore enjoyed a fruitful career as a comedian, actor, and musician, his love life wasn't always quite as smooth sailing. Keep watching to learn about all four marriages and how they ended up falling apart. And if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Dudley Moore's First Two Failed Marriages Moore wed his first wife, British actress and model Susie Kendall, in 1968. She's retired now, but she starred in dozens of films throughout the 60s and 70s, including 1967's To Sir With Love, Fraulein Doctor, and The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Although she and Moore ended up divorcing in 72, they remain lifelong friends. Three years after parting ways with Kendall, while Moore was living in L.A., he married Tuesday Weld. She, too, was an actress best known for her roles in films like Thief, Once Upon a Time in America, and Falling Down. Moore and Weld reportedly split up roughly 20 or so times throughout their marriage. But even though their relationship wasn't always the easiest to navigate, they did end up having a son, Patrick, in 1977. Sadly, however, even bringing a child into the world wasn't enough to keep their marriage alive, and they ended up divorcing in 1980. Moore later expressed remorse that he had missed out on much of his son's childhood. In the early 80s, he dated actress Susan Anton, best known for appearing in films like Wizards, Spring Fever, and Cannonball Run 2. While they were together, a great deal was made by the press out of their height difference. Moore stood at 5'2", while Anton was 5'11". Moore's Third and Fourth Marriages On February 21, 1988, he married his third wife, actress Brogan Lane. Lane, who was 25 years younger than Dudley when they tied the knot, was born in Virginia in 1955. She's best known for her work on Arthur II on the Rocks and Blame It on the Bellboy. She first met Moore while she was an extra on Arthur in 1981. But their marriage fell apart three years after they walked down the aisle. They filed for divorce in December of 91. By the time their marriage ended, Moore already had a handful of affairs with various lovers, including longtime lover Nicole Rothschild. Moore was 30 years her senior when she became his fourth and final wife in 1994. They first met when Moore's career was at its peak. Apparently, Rothschild flung herself across the hood of his car and demanded his autograph. Their marriage was replete with troubles, and their antics became regular fodder for gossip columns in America and in England. In 1994, Moore was arrested and charged with domestic assault after he allegedly assaulted Rothschild in their home. Their living situation was also fairly complicated. Her ex-husband, Charles Cleveland, lived with the couple and was even present at the birth of the couple's son, Nicholas, in 1995. In the winter of 96, Moore and Rothschild were pictured at the balcony of their home, reunited after having a pretty intense falling out. But just a few months later, in June of 97, Rothschild sued her husband for millions in damages, claiming she had been terrorized during their marriage. 
But after making several hard-hitting and shocking claims about sex, drugs, and violence, Rothschild halted her divorce action in 1998 after learning Moore was terminally ill. While Moore maintained good relationships with Kendall, Weld, and Lane, he expressly forbade Rothschild from attending his funeral. Things got dark during his fourth relationship. While Moore and Rothschild were together, he allegedly started smoking crystal meth. A side effect of that drug is compulsive sexual activity. Rothschild claims that her husband would demand her to dance half-nude for hours on end at his beachside mansion in Marina del Rey. When she couldn't dance any longer, he would pay sex workers to keep on dancing until the sun came up. In Rothschild's divorce petition, she admitted to punching Moore in the eye, knocking him to the ground, and kicking him. But according to her, she only resorted to such violence after he had attacked her in a drug-induced rage. In fact, a week before they got married, Moore tried to choke her. In 2009, Rothschild announced she was in talks with various publishing houses to distribute her tell-all memoir about her relationship with her late ex-husband. News of her memoir was met with total disgust by friends of Moore, who feared the tome would whitewash Rothschild's action while demonizing Moore. But the book was never published. Moore's Illness and Death In April of 97, Moore spent five days in a New York hospital. He was informed he had calcium deposits in the basal ganglia of his brain, as well as having irreversible frontal lobe damage. Later that year, in September, he underwent quadruple coronary artery bypass surgery in London. Around this time, he also suffered four strokes. On September 30, 1999, Moore revealed he was suffering from a degenerative terminal brain disorder called progressive supranuclear palsy, which in the medical world is referred to as a Parkinson plus syndrome, since it has many of the symptoms of Parkinson's plus more. Some of the early symptoms he exhibited were similar to being intoxicated by alcohol. In fact, the press reported several times he seemed to be drunk in public before the news of his condition was made public. In 2001, Moore was appointed a commander of the Order of the British Empire. Even though his health was quickly deteriorating and he was already confined to a wheelchair, he attended the ceremony at Buckingham Palace on November 16th to collect his honor. He passed away in Plainfield, New Jersey on the morning of March 27th, 2002, after succumbing to pneumonia. He was 66. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Dudley Moore? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.